everyone and welcome to the powder room wow it's so amazing our very first time going live five friends loving each other and just basically gisting and talking and it's so amazing that we have so many of you some of you some are friends some are newbies but it's really cool of you to join us tonight so this is the powder room and what basically is the powder room about the powder room is a private space in a public place where you can let your head down, listen to honest talk, gain on common sense, get yourself together to face the world again. But this time armed with truth, tact and tenacity. Right. So we're five friends. I think we've been friends like forever. I, I can safely say that we've all been friends for at least 20 years. And one of us, I've even known her right from when we were in our nappies, right, way back in children's church. So it's five people. I'm not the only person. Um, there are five of us. And we're just, you're going to meet them one at a time. But let me just quickly tell you their names before we jump in. Of course, I'm Karachi. And I'm Karachi, the word Smith. And I'll be moderating most of our powder room sessions. And then there is Ruth, the prof. There's Ada, the sage. There's Chinwe, the strategist and Casey, the realist, and you get to meet them now. Let's kick things off with Ruth. Ruth, the prof, hello. Hi, everyone. How you all doing? <laughs> we good, we good. How's your yeah. end? Great. All right. Please do us the honor of introducing the next person. All right, I'll call on. KC. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good evening. It's good to be here with you. It's good to have you on this meeting edition. Um, Ada, are you there? Yes, Ada? I am here. Hi, everyone. Um, it's good to be here. Um, I'm Ada, the sage, and you're going to get to find out why I'm called the sage. And I'm going to be introducing the master strategist herself, Chinwe. Hi, everybody. Good to be here. You're in the right place. This is C, the strategist. See well, you're the powder. Too much lip gloss. Too much lip gloss. <laughs> <laughs> it's a loud girl. <laughs> yes, I know. It's powder room. If we don't put lip gloss, I don't know where we're going to put lip gloss. So anyhow, yeah, yeah. you're welcome. So like we rightly said, this is very let your head down kind of place. It's our very first time. So if you see any mistakes, just take it that way. Um, tonight, we decided we're going to share first some opportunities. It was quite a tussle. Which topic are we going to start with, you know? Um, but we chose to do opportunities first. And then later, we get to other juicy topics. But before we even jump into opportunities, I think we should get to know a little more about um, those of us that are here. Maybe I'll just probably start with myself. Um, my name is Karachi Atia. I'm a creative content producer and an educator, I'm a voiceover artist, moderator. I'm also a team coach. I'm a thespian because I produce children's theater. I have over 17 years experience in the educational sector. Um, I curate bespoke music, food, drink events. I'm co-producer of Familiar Grounds. I'm one of the producers of Sons of the Caliphate and Halita, which is presently showing on Africa Magic. I'm also the Nigerian ambassador for the award-winning show Dance Moms. So that's it, Karachi, the wordsmith. I'm going to hand over now for that introduction to um, Chinwe. Chinwe, tell us a bit about your... Okay, hello everyone. Chinwe is a lawyer, a mediator, an arbitrator, and also a trainer in dispute resolution. So legal stuff. I'm also, um, 
I have some creative tendencies, you know, I have, I'm a voice actor, amateur one, not as good as Karachi. And then um, I also run a side business. <laughs> I have a um, Favor Dazzle, you know, it's a brand that has um, a collection of shoes and other accessories. That's me. So how's the lockdown doing you? Like, what's oh, going wow. on? So it's been 10 weeks of working from home and it's been crazy. So homeschooling and all. So uh, it's, it's been amazing. And, you know, reading articles and all that, it's, it's sad to see, you know, the negative impacts of the virus and lockdown, you know, domestic abuse, marriages going bonkers and all that, you know. But, but I believe things will be fine. Thanks. Thank you so much, strategist Chinwe. Casey, realist, talk to us. All right, thank you very much, Karachi. Uh, so in the past 15 years, what I've basically done is to help existing businesses um, accelerate their sales. I've also um, helped a lot of new, uh, a lot of boarding uh, businesses go to market. Um, um, so I'm a business growth strategist, uh, a personal development coach, I'm an accredited mediator of Lagos Multidoor Courthouse, singer songwriter. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur, of course, um, to, to help people develop their businesses. I should also have, you know, uh, a knack of it. I'm a serial entrepreneur, um, a butcher. One of the businesses I run is a meat business. Um, I run a beauty business too. Um, so, um, so that's basically it from me. Many other things, you know, this platform may not just allow us to go on and on about ourselves, especially because of time. Thank you, Kara. Thank you, everyone listening. And Casey, thank I forgot to say thank you. I got my delivery of meat today, but I forgot to call you. So, so tired. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Imagine she's a, yeah. a meat <laughs> That's what I prefer to call it. All right. Well, thank you. Fresh cow meat. <laughs> At the same she's off all the way from Canada. Ada, talk to us. Tell us about yourself and what's up with the lockdown. Okay, so um, I'm Ada. I'm a lawyer and I have practiced law for over 10 years, um, specifically in corporate and commercial law. Um, when I'm not practicing law, I'm talking. When I'm not talking, then I'm probably in an interior decoration store looking for stuff to, you know, make my space look beautiful. Anybody who knows me knows that I do love interior decorating. I am also very passionate about um, young people. Um, every school my kids have attended, I have always um, volunteered to get involved with working with the secondary school children in area of helping them to foc um, focus themselves on, you know, purpose and, you know, finding a meaning for their lives um, quite early um, in life. Um, I'm currently in Canada and I'm working towards um, relicensing to practice law um, here. It's been a process, it's been worthwhile, but it's also been very demanding. Um, in terms of the lockdown, I would say that um, we have shared experiences, you know, the same way you guys felt it over there in Nigeria, we also felt it here. It was stressful, but it was also a lot of fun. I do agree that the homeschool impact was a challenge for me, um, working with an eight year old, you know, suddenly the children just want to suspend their thinking and outsource all the thinking to you, the mom. So you find you're now going to be their entertainer, you're the one who's doing homework, you're the one teaching. I mean, it's just a it, you're just becoming a bag full of so many hats. You know, you have so many hats to wear, but um, I think it's made me a more, a more resilient person. Um, so things are gradually easing down here and, you know, life is gradually getting back, back to normal, which we hope it does, you know, even faster. Thank you so much, Ada. That was really nice. When you said the experience was the same, I, I, I was thinking, should I shoot her? Should I not shoot her? Someone is in Kadana. <laughs> I just said it not to. So let's just pretend like that's all okay. Thank you so much. Okay, last but not the least, the Professor Ruth. Talk to us. Hi, my name is Ruth. <laughs> my friends call me the truth by Ruth because I'm a content creator. I'm a HR professional. I'm a social entrepreneur. I'm an author. I'm a, the principal consultant of Ruby Crest Services. I'm a personal development coach. I am the member of a member of the John Maxwell team of coaches and speakers and trainers. 
I love to read and write and tell stories. So to, in order to engage, to inspire, to improve people's lives. I also love to connect people with resources that add value to their lives. So that's all about me for now. For the lockdown, <laughs> the schedules are crazy, but you know we're hanging in there and we're, 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 we're winning. And I love the fact that there's a challenge ahead, there's the challenge before us and we're overcoming day by day. So it's, it's a new experience, but it's been refreshing. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I like what you just said at the end. It's a new experience for everybody. And we're all trying to wrap our head around it and become adaptable. But we're, we're going to end victorious. I'm so sure of that. So if you're just joining us, this is the powder room where five girls are just sitting down, putting on the powder and basically talking about life. And this is our very first mating edition. If you would like to talk to us, you can easily talk to us by sending a mail to hello at powderroom.com. You want to ask us questions, you want to make suggestions, or even want to share, you want to give us topics that you want us to talk about. That's the email address for you. Hello at powderroom.com. And powder room is a double R. And um, also don't forget to click the like button and subscribe so that every time we're having a, um, a session, you're going to be the first to know about it. Um, turn on your notifications. And if you do get disconnected, not a big deal. Just connect right back on. Now, tonight, like I said earlier, we decided that we're going to talk about opportunities. Everyone is saying we strategize, we brand, do something new. What's the something new? What are we strategizing? That's exactly what we're talking about tonight. Like you heard their introductions, their quite a, a vast um, number of specialties amongst five of us here. And so we're just going to share a bit of that with you. Um, maybe Chime will start uh, with you. What's happening in your neck of the woods? Okay, yeah, Karachi, I'm, I'm so happy we chose this topic because a lot of people are thinking about, you know, after, you know how you do it lost before and after. A lot of people are thinking, okay, after COVID, how am I going to emerge, you know? And I really believe in multiple streams of income and multiple capabilities. So around my space, you know, because I'm a mediator and all that, I've seen that mediation is growing in Nigeria. And so I'll just talk about a few things I think people can add to what they're doing. So you don't just have a job or a business, you can add other streams of income. So you can actually become a mediator. And people assume that you have to be a lawyer to be a mediator, you don't have to. So I was trained by um, CEDA in the UK, Center for Effective Dispute Resolution. But in Nigeria, the Lagos Multiple Courthouse organizes mediation training and it's a paid training, but it's something that's affordable and people can do. Right now, because of the lockdown, the LMDC is trying to see how online trainings can go. So you can go on their website to as a mediator. But there's some free trainings online you know, that you can do for ADR called alternative dispute resolution. You don't have to be a lawyer to do that. I'm generally going to share tips and hope that people listening would also do their own research, okay? Then you can also become a mediation advocate. And there's a training coming up um, in a few weeks, no dates fixed yet, but because I'm on the faculty, I can say that. So mediation advocacy, almost like mediation, but you don't have to be a lawyer and it's very affordable. It's just about 30,000 naira to do that training for two days and then you become a mediation advocate and the opportunities are there, you know, to- Where does he pay? Does mediation Sorry? pay? Does he pay? Well, yes, it does pay, but I must tell you, I remember when I went to the UK for a training, when the mediators are talking about how they charge maybe £2,000 per hour, and we're looking at them like, okay, we're going to get there. So KC and Ruth, they've done the training and they're <laughs> KC mediates as well, you know, and the pay is not so great, but it's something because within a few weeks, you can actually recoup whatever you paid for the training, and it just helps with the profile as well. And then I'm doing a training now on online dispute resolution. You can actually do mediation online. And so there are many platforms like the Craig platform, media.com, you become a mediator and you start to settle disputes. It's more money because these platforms are uh, managed by people abroad, so you actually earn better. So that's an opportunity. Then other opportunities around media uh, and tech-based opportunities, I'll just mention a few. So I went to the VoiceOver Academy to become a voice, to train as a voice actor, and that was very affordable. They did um, an online training 
um, some weeks ago, but another one will be shared with. So Voice Over Academy, you can learn to become a voice actor. And once you do that, you can get on the voice bank and also be on the platform to get opportunities for jobs. Because people are now thinking about online-based advertising and promotion. So you can you know, do voicing and all that. There's also the opportunity, people are creating eBooks. So you do your voice for books and get paid even for, um, with um, clients abroad. Finally, I'll just talk about managing social media accounts. So content creation, managing correspondence on Instagram and all that. A lot of people who own businesses. I am looking for a content creator as well, you know, and then it's a, it's a handsome sum they pay monthly. So I'll just stop there with those few opportunities and hear from others. Thanks, Karachi. Wow, thank you, Chinwe. And um, what you said about voiceover was really true. I remember when I was um, freelancing for Insights and a few other places, I was doing voice, one sheet of paper, you get paid at least 20,000 Naira, 25,000 Naira, depending on who the client is. And so you can save up and you know actually do quite a few things with it. So that voice of opportunity really rings a bell. Thank you so much, Chinwe, for sharing those. Um, thank you. Yay. Moving on to realist. Did you mention, Casey, did you mention that you are a Washington fellow? I don't think so. Like I said, there are many things, you know, to no, us that, one is that uh, we cannot just keep sharing. You know, I'm a fellow of many bodies, but yes, I'm a Mandela mm. Washington fellow. Um, so, yes. <laughs> you, would, you would have asked me what it meant to be that, right? <laughs> what you didn't yeah. ask. Okay, yeah, Sorry. so moving on, right? Um, opportunities, um, um, COVID threw certain industries to our face. Um, during the lockdown, it was clear that certain things were more important than others. And one of it was survival. Survival as regards eating and drinking, okay? And so because that was very paramount, I will be talking about the opportunities bordering around agri tonight. CBN has a loan, uh, which I think is very reasonable. You know, in this part of the world, uh, many times business owner are very skeptical of taking loans. Um, but the truth is you can't grow a business um, without having a facility to run it. And so there's a CBN fund, um, the AXME fund, that is designed for businesses in the agri sector, okay? And then when we say agri, it doesn't just have to do with farming, it has to do with the entire value chain. So from farming to whether you're testing, whether you're an optica, whether you're a processor, whether you're a middleman, you know, getting it from one person to the other, whether all you do is just to assemble the product together, um, plants, livestock, whatever it is. That uh, loan has a 10 uh, million Naira cap, um, spaced out over a seven year period, period with a six months moratorium. I, I mean, I, I think that's fair enough. At least within that period, you can take a breeder and then um, begin to find your, your foot by the seventh month to begin to repay. So I think that's a fantastic opportunity. Um, anyone within that sector or anyone trying to find what to do now, so when I say trying to find out, find what to do now, there are different categories of people this season. Some have money, they don't know where to put it, you know, especially because the Naira is, um, you know, depreciating at, a, at an alarming rate. Uh, some others don't have at all. They are trying to see how to generate income, you know. And so depending on the category you're falling into, even if you say, okay, let me just quickly start up something for myself. It could just be processing something or assembling something that has been processed, especially if you live in a city like Lagos, where you have a lot of busy people. The lockdown, you know, um, has eased out. The hustle and the bustle, you know, has begun again. So I think it's a fantastic one. Another one is for people uh, in the knowledge area. Knowledge, they say, is the new gold. Um, you have a lot of us with skills that we can share with another and uh, some people, you know, you just share these things. You just give it out. Um, some people are coaches. Some are trainers. Trainers are one of the people that was that were hit this period, especially because you know people are not able to aggregate. And then I know you have the Zoom sessions and all, but um, converting your knowledge to an online course is just beyond the teaching. Okay, there's a marketing to it. There's a domain to it. There's a payments processing part to it. 
you know, so that makes it uh, very um, needful for anyone within that space, you know, to naturally just go online, you know, market the things you know and earn for it. Some of these things, you just share them, you know, at no, uh, at no cost. And there are uh, particular platforms, I would talk about Think Thinkific specifically because there's a $1 million entrepreneur fund um, targeted towards it. And that's to help you, especially as a newbie trying to go online, you know, help you with mentors that can help you uh, arrange the website, uh, market your courses, and all of that. So anyone who is knowledgeable, you have something to share. It's a skill. Mm -hmm. It's a soft skill. It's a technical skill. You can get it online and it's earning for you. More so a passive income if you also have other things that you do. Thank you, Sorry, Kara. Was that Pinky Fake? Pinky Fake, yes. Think and then I see IFIC. Yes, IFIC. Think then IFIC. There's a $1 million entrepreneurs fund, you know, that um, anyone within that knowledge space can just um, assess rather than feel that, you know, all hope is lost. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Kara. Thank you so much, Katie. And something I you just said. Sorry, what did you say? I said I hope that was helpful. I hope that was helpful too. To me, I'm going to check out Thinkific actually. So that's why I asked you for that. It's not necessarily because I was emceeing. <laughs> but I just remembered something when you mentioned um, that um, people going online and trainers and all of that. There's actually a training. If you're a teacher, like I'm a teacher, uh, uh, professional development is key. So there's actually a training being put together by Meadow Hall Consult. I attend their training every year because they try to be cutting edge. They, they try to um, bring in what's new and they're having a new one, developing an effective blend of the Nigerian and British curriculum happening from the 26th to the 27th. And I spoke to the organizers and they said, if you can get three people to register, you can come for free. So if you're a teacher and you're interested in getting some P, um, you know, professional development, you might just want to take up this opportunity, get three people and then you come for free. Thank you so much, Meadow Hall Consult. We love you, we love you, we love you. Moving on very quickly because time is of essence. Um, talk to us, Ada, what's happening in, with um, opportunities? Okay, so um, over here in Canada, I'm just going to share opportunities um, as it affects um, the industry where I play in, you know how they say, Ebony Neriko Nawachi is where you are eating that you, you know, you protect. <laughs> so um, basically, um, my. Sorry, let me just say that. That's why Ada is the sage. Hey, she doesn't look like someone that speaks Igbo. She throws it in in the middle of sentences. And that was the meaning of what you just said. Ebony Neriko Nawachi, where you eat is where you protect. People are more mindful of things that are beneficial to them directly. Do you understand? Just the same way you say yeah, somebody yeah. wearing a shoe, it's only the person wearing the shoes that knows where it's biting him. Everybody always has a laser focused attitude on things that affect their stomach and his industry. So anyway, <laughs> so um, I'm going to be sharing um, basically three opportunities. Um, so if you're an internationally trained lawyer, um, maybe in the process of writing your um, NCA exams or you're done, the law societies have very robust responses, have made very um, robust responses to COVID. Most of them have um, are slashing articling fees. Some are um, doing some refunds, you know, for people who had paid earlier. Um, and articling time has also been shortened from about 12 months to eight months, you know, in a lot of provinces in Canada. So, um, there's so much. In fact, the updates are, you know, per minute, per second. So I would advise, you know, if you're an internationally trained lawyer or you're, you know, in currently based of licensing, you need to visit the websites of your own um, local law society to find out, you know, what's going on. And then also um, in Alberta, um, Peter Sankoff, um, he's a renowned profes professor of um, criminal law at the University of um, Alberta, um, has been able to negotiate about a thousand spaces you know with law firms i think across canada to absorb articling students and summer students because the, because of covid you know there's been a lot of difficulties with people finding places many firms 
are financially stressed, you, you know, and mightn't have been able to take people in, but he's been able to work something out with them to be able to take in students. So if you visit petersankoff.com, you can get more information. And then LexisNexis.ca um, also have a legal research certification course, which I would advise any internationally trained lawyer who's coming into Canada or who's already here to take. It will boost your chances, you know, with getting um, a job post um, COVID or even helping you, you know, secure your position where you are, because right now it's kind of like the survival of the fittest. So that's, um, I have, I'm currently running the program and I find it extremely enlightening because one of the issues ITL space here is how do we conduct legal research? And that's, you know, the meat and the potatoes of our profession. And then lastly, um, the Canadian government has a plethora of palliatives to help people at different levels, you know, to cope with the stress and the um, difficulties that have been occasioned by COVID. So if you visit www.canada.ca, um, every information you need to know on, on all the reliefs available, you know, for COVID are all on that website. Um, it's really been interesting being here because um, in this part of the world, you know, we can see, you know how they say Ubuntu, you are because we are. It's, you know, you really feel it's here. There's so much going on. You know, nobody is, you know, lost in the chain. Everybody is catered to. You know, it's something I hope that back home, our government, you know, can yeah, really, yeah. really apply in truth and in sincerity, not in on paper like we are used to. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> Don't be angry. I, I'm trying my very best. But once you, that size that you just mentioned for Canada palliatives, can Nigerians apply? No, it can't unless you're a resident here. <laughs> Moving on to the very next person in our panel in the powder room tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ada. Ruthie, oh, Professor. All right. All right, Ada. Ada. Don't kill us. Nigeria will rise the game. Yes. Nigeria will rise the game. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't talk about Canada like that. It's not fair. Anyway. Oh, God. As well, uh, when uh, we are coming, Nigeria is coming. We too, we have palliative. We shall get palliative. there. We shall get there. Which palliative? Eh? Which palliative? We shall get. No problem. We shall get there. <laughs> okay, I want to quick. Uh, hello. We can hear you. Quickly share. I want to quickly share, you know, we've all talked about some opportunities that have come up, you know, now that we are um, in this lockdown, a lot of changes have happened. And if you don't know that we are living in a new normal, then I wonder where you have been, whether you've been in another planet, because things have changed. We're now working from home and um, jobs have just turned upside down. So you, there, there are important things that you, the opportunity you need to take advantage of now is to learn new skills for the new normal. And I will just briefly, because of our time, just share 10 new skills, skills of the future that you need to learn, that you need to get, adopt as fast as possible. Number one, creativity skills and innovation. You need to be someone that you are easy, you can learn, unlearn, and relearn very easily. So you adapt as things are changing. And usually creative and innovative people are very, very adaptable. You need to have EQ skills. What, I, what do I mean by EQ? Emotional quotient. You need to be someone who is able to understand, you're aware of your emotional makeup, not just yours, others, and you're able to manage it. Then also critical thinking. You should be someone that can think on your feet. So you learn to take up challenges, learn to take up things and learn how to think on your feet, learn how to, you know, um, resolve things as quickly as possible because everything is going fast now. Then active learning skills. I talked about creativity and innovation. You need to be someone who can learn very easily. We usually call it agile. So if you hear things, you need to be agile in learning in changing, in adapting. Um, judgment and decision is one key area that you need to develop skills on. The ability to make decisions, the ability to help people make their decisions. Chiwe talked about um, um, 
mediation. So if you if you want to be a mediator, you should be someone who has is quick, you know, in making judgment and helping people make decisions. Then interpersonal you and communication in your house between you? siblings. Mediator is for you. If you're good at judging case in your house. Yeah. Yes, that's very key because okay. a lot of people have they have them, they do it, they'll say, Hey, wait, 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 what's this? So you know, these are the things you need to go and dig up and bring up, you know. It's very good, and people um, employers are really looking for people with those skills. Then leadership skills. Sorry, I was talking about interpersonal or communication skills first. You need to be able to communicate. I run um, interviews and it's very, very depressing when I see someone with so much potential that cannot communicate that potential. It's really depressing for me and it, all it takes is learning some skills on how to speak well, how to write well and others. Then leadership, people are looking for leaders. Leaders are people who know the way, they go the way and they can show the way. People that can coach, people that know, you know how to put things together and how to influence people towards a particular um, goal or direction. So pick up leadership skills. Don't say, no, I'm a follow-up for life. No, we all have areas that we can you know, manifest our leadership in. Then diversity, the world is a global village. You can't stay and say, oh, I'm a local champion. I, I, I like Nigeria. See how Ada is talking about Canada's uh, opportunities. You should Very be open to them. Don't close up and say, I'm not in Canada, so it will not help me. No, the world is a global village. I have people connecting with me from India, from from Sweden, all all sorts. In my on my LinkedIn, on my on my um, Facebook, I get people from everywhere just talking like they are next door. So please learn diversity, cultural intelligence, learn about other cultures. That's a very great skill to to have. What do other people how do? They live. How do they think? How do they do something? Some things that are acceptable in Nigeria is not acceptable in some climb and if you don't know that you can go there and and you know you know start goofing so please learn you have the internet use the internet for important things don't use it to just browse go on uh, and just be watching funny movies and or funny shows and all that use it to learn about the world that you live in you never know where you end up tomorrow then technology if you don't have technological skills well what are you doing so get pick up tech how to use um you see, we're using Zoom now. We're reaching you via technology. If we didn't know anything, how would we reach you? Now that all of us are locked up. So get technological skills, learn to use all the applications, learn to even build them. You know, I just saw an app that says you can learn coding in a few minutes a day. So that's, you know, look for all those apps, things that are fun and but you're learning a skill that will be useful to you. And then learn how to embrace change. Change is the change is the only constant. And now things are changing faster than it changed before. So be someone who is open to change, who embraces change. Um, I will just end with um, a quote from John Maxwell. He said, when there is hope in the future, there's power in the present. So if you know that there's something ahead, you can always you know, change, get skills that will be better you for the future, then you have power for the now. So. Remember, when there's hope for the future, there's power in the present. So take advantage of all these things. Learn the skills, learn skills, learn skills. And um, you know, pick up all the resources you need to increase your value. You are more than what you think. Thank you, Kara. <laughs> I'm sure you guys see why we call her prof. Give her two minutes, she takes eight minutes. Casey, what is <laughs> it? Yeah, I, I wanted to say that, um, you know, um, giving credence to what Ruthie just said about technology, um, it's so scary um, how technology is actually overtaking the world. Um, I was seeing a video of um, Jimmy Fallon's show some time ago. Um, he did a duet with the robot Sophia, and it was the most excellent thing I've ever heard, right? And um, I, was, I was so scared within me. I was like, even music that has to do with creativity that some of us think, you know, we really do not need to do so much about. So I'll be saying that you know, all time will probably come. You know, maybe in the workplaces, if you talk about technology taking over the jobs, you know, mundane tasks, that can be understandable. But singing, you know, it was so excellent. And while I was doing that, because I'm a spirit being, 
you know, a, 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 a verse of the holy book just hits my heart. And, and that verse says that if you will not worship me, I will cause stones to rise up, you know, and worship in your place. And, you know, stones are made of uh, 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 silicon. Sand. Stones are made of silicon. Computers are made of silicon. You know, wow. I was so scared and it just hits me hard. My creator mm. saying to me, if you do not worship me, a time will come. It might be this robot that will replace you. It threw me off. So beyond the regular skills, beyond our way of life, you know, we just all need to up our game, you know, in 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 what area it is that we find ourselves. Okay. So be it education, health, religion, whatever it is, the speed is alarming. I I I, I thought it was just necessary to chip that in at that point. Amazing. No one is indispensable. That is the reality. Oh, wow. yeah, the only thing I heard is a warning to everyone that sings. All these people that used to cover off key with Shekere, there is Sophia now. <laughs> Sophia is waiting for you. Oh my. Sophia is waiting for you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Casey. That was very deep, actually. Yes, it was. That scripture. Yeah, are that right? Connecting that yeah, scripture. and and in fact, even from yeah, Casey was spot on, and even from what um, Ruth was saying, the prof, you know, I'm not going to even delve too deep into what she said, but to just put all she said in a capsule, all that Ruth described are transferable skills. Have you ever wondered what made Daniel relevant, regime after regime? In Darius's time, Beltesha's time, you know, every regime came and he remained relevant. He had portable skills. So the skills she shared are skills that may not be um, specific, like a specific technical skill, but these are things that when you build them, you can move them from industry to industry. Every industry will need a good communication or spokesperson, you know? Every, you know, there's so many of those skills that you know are portable. People should also focus. So that's what I was just trying to say that those are transferable skills that you can move, like briefcase from one industry to the into another industry. So you're not caught up, you know, if hair yeah. closes up, you can move it there because it's, you know, it's movable. Yeah. Nigeria, um, palliative closes up, you move it to Canada palliatives. Thank you so much. Very, very serious. Well, I can see a, a few of us are on YouTube. We love you guys. Onye, we feel you. Top notes by Tokwe. Thank you for joining us. Eddie Anga, Neka from the UK, Choma Chinonye, and uh, a few other people. Shola Odeinze, Dolakbo, and a few others as well. Thank you so much for sitting in with us. Um, I just want to share one more opportunity um, based on what um, Ada just said right now. Uh, when I was introducing myself at the beginning, I talked about uh, we are the, being the producers of uh, Sons of the Caliphate and Alita. We actually have a new pr uh, project coming out. So, and one thing that we do is we like, um, you know, we like giving opportunities to people who are not necessarily known faces. Once you have the talent and the skill, those transferable skills, as a matter of fact, some of the people on our sets are not even full-time actors, but you know you can do that. I think you might want to follow at Dimboba on Instagram and also follow Dimbo Atia on Facebook because very soon he'll be announcing when those auditions will be. So if you want to be an actor, this is your shot. Shoot your shot. Follow at Dimboba and at Dimbo Atia, and he will let you know what's up. So that's our that's our that's our time, guys. We, remember, we tried to do it sharp, sharp, and then to the you know shoot straight. And today we did opportunities. Like I said, if you heard something you're not too sure, maybe a website, maybe an opportunity, send us a mail, hello at powderroom.com and just ask your questions and we'll direct you to the, um, the right person and get you the right information. Next week, we're digging deeper. We're digging deeper. Next week, we're talking about nice girls don't get the corner office. <laughs> hey, it's Whoop. a deep one. Let's me see. It's a shaking <laughs> kind of thing. And guess oh what? God. And Chua, guess what? It's very, it's very um apt for these times. If you really so, have been following what's happening in Nigeria, you will kind of like understand a bit of what I'm not saying. But our topic for next um, week, Saturday, 7 p.m. same time here on the powder room on YouTube channel. Nice girls don't get the corner office. So if you want to know what that's about. 
call your friends and let's hang out together. I'm going to give everyone an opportunity to just give a sign off before we all go. Just a final word to um, everyone, starting from the realist, KC. All right. Um, so uh, the buzzword over this period has been flatten the curve, flatten the curve, health workers, um, all manner of professionals have been doing their bits to flatten the curve. Now, we significantly have been able to flatten the curve. It's time to get ahead of the curve. So let's get going, stand up, square up, and move on. That's it. I love that. Thank you so much, Casey. Get ahead of the curve and move on. See, talk to us, see the strategist. Yeah, yeah. So for me, um, you know, it's an opportunity to give back. So I'll just say, don't stay on one spot, keep moving. And at the same time, draw others up, okay? Any opportunity you have to draw others up, do that. And as well, don't stay on one spot. Don't get depressed, don't get let down. Move on and draw others up. See you next week, by God's grace. Thank you so much, C. Yeah, palliatives. <laughs> I did, yeah. <laughs> So don't, don't push her to give you one proverb that you can't interpret. <laughs> I actually am going to end with a proverb. That's why I'm the same. You know, the beauty about proverbs is proverbs help you to compress a one-hour discussion in one sentence. So everything I'm going to say is this, and I will interpret it. Are people saying evil that? It means that if the prey starts learning new tricks to dodge the bullet of the hunter, that he starts running zigzag. Then the hunter also now learns to, sh learns to shoot in a zigzag manner. All we're trying to say is this, things are changing, change with the times. Oh, See you wow. next week till we wow. discuss office politics, yeah. Wow, thank you so much. Things are changing, change with the times. You heard it straight from Canada Immigration Palliatives. Ruthie! <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. for that. We pay. You've not started. Ruthie. Things fall apart, says things fall apart. They said proverbs are the oil on which your words are eating. Correct. Correct. <laughs> you, you, have made, you have made everything sweet. Okay, I'll just say quickly. Um, we may not know what the future holds. But if you know who holds the future, then will you be fine? So, you know, just keep that hope up, keep the hope in the future up, and you will have power in the present. See you wow. next week. Keep the hope in the future up, and you have power in the present. I will end with mine. You know, I usually end with something very profound. That's why they left me for last. So the profound uh, wisdom I would like to share tonight as I sign off is that sometimes we drop the ball, sometimes we make mistakes. If ever you get to one of those times, it's cake. Thank you very much, everyone. I love you guys so much. Thanks That's for having me. Like it's it cake. <laughs> it's cake and yeah. ice cream. It's cake, cake and ice cream. And ice cream. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. if we're in the Very UK. Well, so sorry. No, uh, we're not, not. None of us are in the UK presently. Um, four of us are in Nigeria, in different um, um, places in Nigeria, and one of us is in Canada. So that's to answer your question. Thank you so much, everybody. So that's for us to one. So yes. in the UK, Ada is your rep. <laughs> yes, Ada. Ada is offering, you know, international. She's covering international waters. <laughs> Thank All right. you. Thank you so much, everybody. Love you guys. Bye. See you next Bye. time. Bye. 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 Bye.